Welcome to the Agents of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algie, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. Welcome to another edition of Agents of Rock podcast. And this week we have Dave Moody with us. He is from the band Hairball. And we're glad to have him on. We had we had a listener that has been trying to get you on for a long time, and I got in contact with you over the last couple of weeks, and we got it all worked out. So here we go. <laughs> glad to be here. Glad to be here. Finally, we've got a guest on the show that, in case we forget his name, he's got a <laughs> name. He's got a name yeah, tag. That go, is yeah. awesome. He makes man. it. He, he makes it easy. He has his I, name on his shirt, and he has his name on front of him. <laughs> <laughs> so the so the. Uh, so the listener's name is Bruce Croak. So here you go, Bruce. Oh, thank you. Thank Bruce, you. Thanks, Bruce. Bruce is a sweetheart. He's a nice fella. There you go. Figured, Dave knows I, Bruce. That's there you go. That's a <laughs> nice guy. There you go. No, I, I knew that you, he'd probably run into you or talk to you at some point or other because he's been on this for a long time. Actually, for over a um over a year, because he had talked about you were in a previous band and had talked to you about that at that point. So you're in hairball now, but you've only been there for a short time, right? About a year. Uh, I got a uh, invite um, probably about a year and a half. Wow, I'm going to say a year and a half ago. Probably maybe a year and a half, but close to you know, close to a year and a half. And um, I got a phone call, and uh, you know, their their one of their singers was leaving the band, and um, they called me up and asked me if I'd be interested. And next thing I know, I'm sitting here doing a podcast with you. So here we go. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been, uh, it's been a whirlwind. So, but I'm uh, very pleased where everything's landed and, and how everything's went. So very grateful for what I have. Great. So the people that don't know and have never have heard of Hairball, explain what kind of band it is and what you guys do and your presentation. Sure. It's a uh, bombastic celebration of everything rock and roll from like the 70s and 80s, meaning you're going to have full costuming. We got a uh, we got five video walls that are 15 feet wide and tall. Uh, we've had 30 uh, or uh, eight 30 foot uh, pyro cannons that blow fire that'll warm your face up if you get too close. And then we've got uh, more more uh, pyro than a kiss concert. Uh, we do authentic costuming. Matter of fact, we do kiss. We do uh, we do Gene and Paul. We do um, you know Alice Cooper, D. Snyder. It, it rotates on a wheel. There's three singers in the band, uh, and the band that's up there stays up there. And the costuming is all authentic. And uh, one minute you're going to see Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. The next minute you're going to see David Lee Roth. The next minute you're going to see Alice Cooper and Dee Snyder. You're going to see Vince Neil. You're going to see um, Steve uh, Steve Perry, Steven Tyler. You'll see, you know, um, uh, Brian Johnson. You, you know, just it just goes on and on and on and on. There's there's a plethora of. Uh, of costumes and, and outfits that we can wear. And when we come out, we do everything as authentic as you might think. Whenever you see it, it's big and over the top. There's explosions and bombs every time the show starts over every third song because you've got a new character coming out. And uh, you just have to see it to believe it. Uh, when people see, when people hear about it for the first time, they go, well, that just sounds like a cover band bullshit come out and see it <laughs> and tell me we're a cover band we are a cover band but at the same time we're all about the show uh and we're all about delivering the goods so um i invite you to come out and uh and have that uh, same mentality after you see the show that's awesome so you say so having three singers what what people do you cover as far i know you come out and make up i know you, you do a i've seen some of your videos online and your gene is is spot on Thank you. It looks really Thank good. You. And Thank you. I will be, well, I do like uh, all the raspy voice singers. I'll do, um, you know, Gene. Uh, I do Kevin DeBro, Quiet Riot, Tom Kiefer of Cinderella, Brian Johnson of ACDC, um, Gene Simmons, of course, Alice Cooper, um, Blackie Lawless, um, you know, those kind of characters. And I'll do generally 
their biggest hits, you know, because it's very much geared towards the common fan and, you know, the common fan of the band. So you're not going to really hear too many deep cuts, but when you see the, when you see the characters come out in the costumes and the outfits that you remember from MTV back in the day before they played video game bullshit, um, you know, that was, that was, what we grew up on and that's what we try to bring out for the people and let them see, you know, the real deal. Nice. So Dave, which of the, of the five or whatever that you named off that you um, do, do you have one that's your favorite to do or, or is that, is there one that you really, or are they all pretty much even, I know you were in, so I know that you were in the ACDC band. So mm-hmm. Um, I'm assuming that the Brian Johnson one is one you it's kind of near and dear to your heart, but is that the one that's your favorite to do or does it, you have one? Well, every, every single character that I do was an influence on me. So uh, to, to, to pick one would, would not be right. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I love Gene. I mean, I grew up on Gene Simmons to get to where the war paint is just a, is the dream come true to get to blow fire, you know, to get to wear the con piece. I mean, Jesus, that's cool, you know, <laughs> and uh, to get to be Alice Cooper doesn't suck either. And, um, you know, anytime you come out in one of those costumes, people immediately know who you are. Whenever I come out as D Snyder, I look like a human car wash, but I come out there and give it the hell, you know, and it's a <laughs> lot of fun and people, people just have a ball with it. So, uh, you know, for me to pick a favorite, I couldn't really do it. Um, I just love seeing the looks on people's faces whenever you come out and a costume looks like what they remember and they go, oh, my God, look at the attention to detail. So it, it's it's pretty cool. All of them have the same effect. So to pick one that I like the most would be hard to do. The next time I take my truck to the car wash, I'm just not going to be able to stop laughing. <laughs> You'll think of Dean Snyder, yeah. <laughs> You'll just have to think of it. That is, so so is there is there somebody you haven't done as part of the or the isn't part of the show that you'd like to do that somebody that you that was a real big influence on you? You know, if I had my druthers, it would probably be Lemmy. I would love to do Lemmy because oh, uh, nice. I think that he would be great. Now he would be more of a visual than more of an audible uh, character. Though I am a deep cut hardcore Motorhead fan, um, a lot of people. Well, I mean, I would say. Some people know Ace of Spades, but even then you probably would lose several people. So again, you you, you don't want to serve yourself too much in these moments uh, with this show. What you want to do is serve the greater population. So whenever you look out at, you know, three, five, eight, 10, 15,000 people, you want to make sure that the most people are being served at the same time, you know, so you don't want to serve yourself. And when you do that, that's the death knell. So try to try to get to the greater population and, and save motorhead for whenever you're sitting backstage and you're in your underwear and you can sing. Ace of Space. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, I mean, I know that they have you have the signature band that's behind you and everything do you do you also play instruments uh, i know you do like your your vocals like say with your alice cooper and your you know d snyder and your stuff but you are on a player also then right uh correct yeah i i believe it or not guys i'm a bass player uh <laughs> and i have been for uh, the longest time well, I've, Gene. <laughs> I've, I've, toured, you know, I've toured the world as a bass player i played bass for billy ray cyrus for like 10 years and oh. toured the world and i had local bands and i played bass in that in, in those and 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 uh one day somebody realized that i could sing acdc and then like i said the next thing i know i'm on i'm on this podcast with you talking about the vocals <laughs> that i do so you know in, in my very core uh, in my heart, uh, I am a, um, I guess I'm whatever you need me to be. I'm a utility player. You know, I can do whatever you need me to do. I can play guitar, I play bass, I can sing. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm very blessed to be able to do all those things. But if I had my druthers of what I want to do or what I, or not what I want to do, but what I like to do, it would be bass, bass playing because I just, I just love it. Nice. Cool. So where, so where are you guys based out of, or, or, or do you guys actually fly in or not fly in, but go meet up to these gigs or are you in one spot and then go to these places? How does that work? 
Yeah, we have, uh, you know, most of the band, you know, everybody lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's based out of there. Uh, and that would be our hub. And we have a Prevost bus and a, and a semi full of, you know, again, uh, come and see it yourself. We'll show you. Uh, it's, uh, it's a semi chock full of production uh, um, for an arena show. So you can see what's going on out there. Um, but um, basically, I'll fly up to Minneapolis and meet the bus and then we'll take a little road trip and go to wherever we need to be. And uh, it's just a uh, it's a it's a well-oiled machine. Nice. Cool. That is really cool. So you're not playing at like Joe's bar down the street. You're not going to be doing that this weekend. We're not above <laughs> anything. I'm just saying we're probably not going to fit. <laughs> it's like, well, we got a 15 foot video screen. It's like going, I got a four foot stage. I don't think yeah, it's going to hurt. <laughs> no, we got five of those. And, uh, and yeah, it, you know, I, like I said, it, it, it isn't, um, uh, it is nothing's beneath us uh, from that standpoint, sure. but we outgrow things in life. And uh, one of them has been the stages that we've played on. And now we're in, you know, you know we need a, a pretty big, pretty big uh, piece of real estate to set up what we've got. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. So you've been in it for a year, you said. So how long has actually the hairball band have, have been established? How long has it been? It's been together for 22 years. Oh uh, and it's, it started, you know, and that speaks to their, uh, you know, their, you know, staying power and and the power of this music and 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 the stuff that we're playing. Uh, it's timeless stuff, and uh, they started out as a spoof act, uh, you know, just kind of taking the piss out of the songs and you know and and uh, you know having fun with it. Um, and then one day they realized, hey. Let's let's just put a little attention to detail here and, uh, you know, get get real costumes and get real production and, and get serious about this and deliver it properly. And, and they did that. And then it shot off like a rocket. And uh, the next thing you know, it's it's like a it's it's the biggest it's one of the biggest touring acts that do what we do uh, in, in North America. Cool. Have you guys gone overseas? You were taking it overseas? Uh, you know? Before I was in the band, they had they'd taken into uh, London with the Minnesota Vikings, and they had they had toured Europe a little bit, and then they they uh, of course Canada and Mexico, and I believe they did a few other things, but that was that was prior to me joining the band. But uh, as COVID restrictions release or, or ease up a little bit, and things start coming around, well, you can never say normal in this climate that we're in, this world that we're in right now. So right. whatever is normal that comes back, you know, maybe we'll be able to do it again, and hopefully we will. We'd love to do that. So when you cool. came in, it was basically at the very end of COVID and then starting when they were getting back. From from the point when they were touring, and then COVID hit, was there was there a was there a major changeover in the band, or was it just you? Or it was just was... me. It was just me. Um, uh, one of the, the the singer that did the voices that I do, he I, for lack of a better, he just wanted to go uh, and maybe even retire a little bit because he had been with the band for so long, I guess. And um, you know, uh, when they called me and. You know that that's what happened. So I was the only changeover from a band member standpoint. I got you. So the video of we've seen, I, I've seen recently, uh, not recently. It's been on the on the of course on YouTube for a long time, but the for a couple of years, the uh, the Paul Stanley, the hair catching fire, that was hairball, right? Yeah, that's the actual guy that I uh, I took the place of, and oh. kudos to him. He, he uh, and that was his hair, right? Oh yeah, he stood oh. there and took it. You know, and Dude, I uh, stayed in <laughs> character and uh, did his bit. And, uh, you know, that that's the part of this band, again, you know, that I tell everybody all the time. You know, the, the you, you hear people say, well, they're just a cover band. No, no. Oh, come see yeah. it. Come no, see I the saw... real deal. You know, and uh, it's all live. It's 100% real. Uh, when your hair catches on fire, you go ahead and keep playing. Uh, I learned that quick, fast, and in a hurry. Whenever I started blowing fire as Gene, I was like, well, you know, there's a chance that you're going to catch on fire here, so just uh, roll with it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that's what we do, you know, and uh, it, it's pretty amazing. And like I said, kudos to him because that just shows total professionalism. I just saw that video here recently, and like you said, he's he acts like no, I, you know that's got to – he knows it's hot. And that, the sure. guy, puts, as soon as he puts out his hair, he's like, 
kind of that gives that rock fist and i'm like going like i said that is a rock star right there i mean that is yeah. absolutely a rock star <laughs> that's rock and roll man that's yeah. that's how you gotta do it show must so, go on so as far as breathing i'm, I'm sure being in an acdc group beforehand you didn't blow much fire in that band no. <laughs> at that point so how did you what did you go to do how did you learn and is this something you learned on your own had somebody train you to do it how did that happen well they don't you know they stopped giving fire breathing classes as far as i can <laughs> tell you know there's a there's, a, there's, a, there's a legal <laughs> thing yeah, on that yeah, yeah, there's a, yeah there's not a lot of places you can go to learn how to do that so but i did have a buddy that uh and his name's mike collins he plays for mr speed and then okay. he does the gene bit and i called Mike and I said, Hey, you know, this is what's going on. This, you know, I need, I need a little guidance here. Right. And, um, we went out into a parking lot in Ashland, Kentucky he was getting ready to play a big theater there. And, uh, he brought his kit with him, his sword and, 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 and his paraffin oil that he uses as the combustible. Right. And, um, he kind of looked at me and he said, you, you look a little nervous. And I go, well, that I'm getting ready to put fire in my mouth. Yeah. I'm a little nervous. And he goes, that's good. He goes, that's going to keep you safe because you respect it. And he's right. You know, uh, so we sit there and I blew fire about 20 times. And uh, it, it, it got more and more comfortable and more and more comfortable. But the real test is, is when you're in front of 5,000 people and, and they get all their camera phones out and, you know, and, and you got to do it then, you know, so, but that even then it's, it, it's totally, you, you isolate yourself and you block yourself off from the moment you pay attention to the flame and what you got to do and, and, and you do it. And, uh, that, that's how, it, you know, it's called being a pro. And that's a good way to do that. Like I said, we know Rich Kosak from, uh, Mr. Speed. He's, been on here, he's been on here a couple of times. He's a great guy. And, uh, but I mean, that's the thing though, find out, do it from learn some, from somebody who actually does it every night or not every night, but every performance. Sure. And, mm -hmm. and like you said, learn the right way to do it. Be scared of it. Be right. You know, I, I wouldn't do it. I'd be scared. shitless. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Alan right. couldn't do it. Cause his, his whole beer would go up in flames. So he can't do it. <laughs> that's why he has the beard. <laughs> yeah. I can never be, a, and he's a bass player too, so he can't. Right, right. <laughs> so how's so, your schedule so, though? Sorry. So Maybe besides I'm... catching yourself on fire, trying to breathe fire, have you ever had any other spinal tap moments with either this band or like the ACDC tribute band? Was it thunderstruck? Well, I mean, you know, the, the, the reason, yeah, it was thunderstruck. The, the reason why that movie is so great is because it hits so close to home. It's all real. You know, all that stuff actually happens. You know, the, 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 the gaps and, and the silliness and, and the absolute ridiculousness that goes into rock and roll and what we do uh, was represented very well by that movie. So, yes, we've had very much some spinal tap moments. Um, um I, to, to think of one though would be kind of hard pressed. I, I will tell you this, the, uh, one of the, maybe the second time that I blew fire, we was in an arena full of people. It was, a, it was the Ralston arena. And, and, uh, I think it's Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, I blew the fire. And when I did it, you know, a big flame came out, but I had a little, little excess paraffin in my mouth. So I spit it out on the stage. Now, these stages are naturally slick anyway. That's just the nature of it. They just are. So I spit it out and did my bit and threw the sword in and walked off stage like Godzilla and did my whole bit. And everybody loved it and cheered. Well, a few characters later, I had to come back out. So I come back out and I'm doing Kevin DeBro and uh, he's a very physical character and a lot of running on stage, a lot of screaming and a lot of just getting the crowd amped up and really into it. And I'm doing my bit and I'm wearing wrestling shoes, which give you a little bit more of a grip, but can be a little slick too. And uh, I took a step back on this big stage and I was just, you know, doing a couple of moves and I hit a slick spot and I went assholes and elbows up in the air <laughs> and just hit the ground and the mic went crack. I mean, it just, boom, you just hear it all over the place. And I hop back up, up real fast, like, like a cat, like, but yeah, I hit really, really hard. So 
you know, th those are moments that happen, You're, you know, and, and things that do happen out there are a lot of them are funny. Uh, some of them I can talk about. A lot of them I can't. <laughs> It so was, you, you just laugh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm blessed to have those moments in my life because I just laugh because you can't make this shit up. <laughs> and it was, it was to work every day. <laughs> and Dave was probably an SM 58 and you just picked it right up and it worked right after you got it up off the floor. No, right? it, you know, it was, it was a very expensive sanitizer oh. and it had a nice little bruise on it. And, oh, shit. Uh, you know, so it, it, it's okay. It's, it's, Hey man, I'll, I'll fall a thousand times going for one cool move. You know, it, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, that's great. You know, I'll look like an idiot going for something, which nine times out of 10 I do, but, uh, that's okay. <laughs> That's great. So how's your guys' schedule looking? Are you guys you guys booked up for the whole summer? Got a lot of lot of stuff coming up? Yeah, we do about 130 shows a year. Uh, we're getting ready to get into the meat of it. I'm leaving next week. I'm going to be gone for three months straight. Um, going to be out on the road. We'll, we'll do, at one point, 28 shows in 30 days. Uh, we're going to be doing Sturgis. We're going to be doing... Uh, just major arenas. We're going to be doing uh, big, huge festivals, um, thousands and thousands of people. Uh, and it's just, um, it's just a blessing and, a, you know, awesome to be able to say that this is my job. That's great. So I, I guess your summers, your, your meat and potatoes because of the festivals and everything. I'm, I'm sure that's. Well, I, you know, we, we play every week. Right. Uh, you know, we play at least three shows a week. But wow, once oh, you wow. get into the summer, once you get into the summertime, it's you're you're on fire. I yeah, you, you, you are. You ain't got to. My summer goes by like like that. You got to pay for and, those five video screens. Yeah, <laughs> those, things, those yeah. things are cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not. They're not cheap. <laughs> That's awesome. Like I said, I've been watching a bunch of your videos this week. Whenever we, I finally got a hold of you and, and got you on here, I've been watching a lot of your videos and stuff. The show looks extremely entertaining. I mean, like I said, I, I would love to see one. I'm, 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 I'm envious of Alan to be able to see a couple of them. And, uh, no, like I said, everybody should go out and see you guys. I think it, it, it looks like, so when you do the characters, I, I kind of noticed through the videos, you do like maybe what, two songs per character just to, and then you go to, to the other characters, basically what you're doing. Yeah. We like to keep it moving. Uh, you want to do, you know, a couple of songs, the biggest hits that they had sure. and, or biggest hits that they might've had. And, um, you know, you want to just kind of keep it moving, you know, and sure. keep the show interesting. That way it keeps you guessing. If you don't like, you know, we're a rock and roll smorgasbord. If you don't like what you see, <laughs> wait two songs. Uh, we got something for you, you know, and, uh, that's usually the way it works. And usually the, we make, you know, we say it all the time. We're not a ham. We're the whole pig. Uh, and we try to deliver on that a lot, you know? So what you see is a total spectacle and, and, uh, we're glad to bring that to you. Sounds like a little bit of some kiss references there. I, I heard. Absolutely. <laughs> if that wasn't a Paul Stanley thing, I've never, <laughs> I don't kiss know what University. it is. Kiss University. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I have to say, you know, you guys were in Evansville. It was just a few months ago and I had to miss your show because I was playing in a bar across the street from you guys that night. <laughs> oh, how many people well, were there? Alan? You couldn't make it. That's at, why you had four show, less people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in a country band. So that place was packed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two different exactly. audiences. <laughs> I love, I love country. Now, is, now, is it new country or old country? It's mostly new country. We do. I'm out. <laughs> we do. We do. Well, you know, the funny thing is, you know, we do three songs from the 90s, which gets the response from the people my age. But most of the what they call bro country or country rap or tractor rap or whatever, most of it I've noticed, like we do several Jason Aldean songs. That dude is an ACDC fan. You listen to any of his songs. And he's stealing from Angus, yeah. You know? But uh, it's a lot more. The songs that we do are a lot more rock and rollish than some of the. Some of it's crap. I don't like Florida Georgia Line, and we do like three or four of their songs. But those twenty-one-year-old <laughs> girls love those songs, and guys mm -hmm. keep buying them beer, and they bars keep bringing us back. So, well, there you go. You can't complain about that. You do what you got to do, and you get yeah. tips out of the deal, right? 
Oh yeah, my tip our tip bucket always has like a hundred bucks in it. You have a tip bucket? Yeah. We never we never had a tip bucket. Well, why? you fucked up there, buddy. I've been to your shows, Dennis. I know why you didn't have a tip bucket. <laughs> People are asking for their money back usually. That's exactly right. <laughs> go to the bar and go, I want my beer money back because this is freaking horrible. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad, but anyway. So, Dave, the about, so, so what were some of your what were some of your influences i mean what got you into to rock is it you've been metal fan for you know all your life and just all that or is it something you've kind of got into lately or i assume well, it's been I mean, a lifelong had, thing well just like your your kiss sign behind you i, I grew up uh, i grew up a huge kiss fan and and my first album ever was destroyer and uh, at the age of six, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Whenever I saw that, whenever I saw that album cover, I just went, "Oh, this is it! This is what I'm going to do." And they thought I was joking, um, so uh, I wasn't joking. This is exactly what I wanted to do with my life. I knew it, uh, but uh, my influences range from everything from Johnny Cash and Merle Haggard and Waylon Jennings and uh, you know David Allen Cole and uh, you know, all the, all the classic country Buck Owens and Mel Tillis and, you know, um, just go on and on with Charlie pride and all, all those guys to Slayer, you know, and, and I love Frank Sinatra and, and I love, you know, I love those kind of people. And, um, so I got a pretty big palette when it comes to music and, uh, but my favorite to listen to, to play would be rock because of the energy and the power of it. But I can find that same energy and power in anything that I listen to. If it moves me, you know, like, uh, like I said, I can, I can sit and listen to fly me to the moon one minute and and then, you know, rain and blood the next, you know, and go, man, I can feel the same energy <laughs> off of both songs and, and go, man, dude, did you feel that? That was great. You know? So, um, you know, I just, I just come, I'm blessed in that manner too, where I was able to have that palette that, that was opened up and I could listen to it and go, Oh man, that's cool. That's cool. You know, it moved me, you know? So yeah, that, that's where I come from. Those, those are my influences and my roots and, and they're steeped in everything. And, and I wouldn't change a thing about it. You know, uh, you know, I'm equal parts, David Lee Roth and Kerry King, you know, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to apologize for it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That, I mean, I think that's, that's a, there are a lot of people that are very narrow focused, narrow minded with stuff. And it's like, sure. you got to open and up. There's something mind. wrong with that. If you know what my you're shit, like, I got like a buddy said, my of mine. That, were, you know. Yeah. I got a buddy of mine that uh, all, all he'll eat is McDonald's, you know, and, and that's fine. That's his <laughs> name. Vince? That's what he likes. He knows <laughs> what he likes. He knows what he likes. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I, you know, I take it. You can take great comfort in knowing that you're going to be consistent in your day, you know? So, uh, that's good. Uh, you know, if you don't, if you don't want to take any chances on anything else, cause you found what you like. It's like Johnny Cash always said, um, uh, one time, a, a interviewer asked him, says, what do you think about all these guitar players that, you know, are speed players and fast pickers and this, that, and the other. And, and he says, well, you know, you know, while they're busy looking for their notes, I found the three that I needed, you know, so <laughs> and, uh, he made a pretty good living out of it, didn't he? He did all right. Yeah, he, did okay. he did all right up to the end. He did all right. <laughs> he, did, he did great. All, he, he had a very full existence. He did. So, so, so Dave, being a musician, as far as, like you said, being a bass player and whatever, playing guitar and stuff was, was vocal something that you did early too, also, or is that something that you came along later in your career i didn't start singing in a band or being a front man until 2000 and wow 15 wow and, yeah and uh like i said it, it just happened I, i'm just as shocked as you are so it, you know it just <laughs> uh it, it it just happened and uh i you know i was a front man on bass so it really that part of it never really bothered me uh and the vocal part of it i could always do acdc um but the actual you know different characters and different voices and things like that that that's something that i had to kind of i had to kind of develop but you know it it's it's all meshed so well and um 
the guys in the band have just been nothing short of stellar and, and supportive and, you know, and helping me and going, you know, try this and this is what I do. And, you know, and, and helping you with characters and the mannerisms and the movements and going, Hey, this is, this is a move and use this move and, you know, and, and do this. And, and uh, it's helped out a lot because like I said, I, I truly was not a front man uh, ever un until like 2015. Wow. So being that there's three singers in the band, do you ever have an issue where you go, Hey, I'd like to, you get a, like a new character or a new person or a new band you want to bring in. Is there any like wrestles for, I want this one or I want this one, you know, is there any no, of that? The, no, at the end of the day, uh, you know, for me uh, to come in and they're so successful uh, the band has been so successful. I just kind of cede the floor to them. You know, they know more about characters and they've probably done characters that worked or didn't work. And, you know, uh, they probably have run the gamut on things. So anything that they want me to do or want me to try, I just say, okay, let's go ahead and give it a shot. You know, so yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty easy to just let them guide the ship. And uh, I'm along for the ride on that. So in those characters, you know, have they offered you a song or a character to try out that you just didn't do well with at all? No, I'll try anything. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, Dave, we think you can do this or Dave, we think you can do that. Uh, okay. I'll give it a shot. You know, uh, no problem. I'm not scared of anything. Uh, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Well, that's, but, that's uh, what I was getting at. Did you yeah. try something that did not work? You know, um, I can't think of one. The ones that they threw at me, I believe that they knew that, Hey, this, this could be a strength for you. This is this fits your voice. This is a character that will work for you. So they gotcha. didn't put me in the situation to be Steve Perry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't ask me to sing really beautiful and pretty, or they didn't ask me to do David Coverdale or anything like that. They knew that I sound like, you know, uh, like I gargled uh, gravel, you know, <laughs> sort of like uh, go out there and do that. So um, they keep me in my, in, in my box. So, uh, you know, they allow me to, to do the characters that I can do well. Well, it sounds like, you know, being that the years that they've done this, that they, you know, with the three different singers, you've got you with the gravelly voice that could do the, that type. You've got your per, people that can do the Steve Perry type stuff. And then you got your, you know, whatever the third one is, you know. So I'm sure that they've got their wheelhouse is filled. <laughs> so whatever they bring in, they can say, hey, you can do this or you can do this or you could do this, you know. And sure. Yeah, they there, know. So they know they know what's up you know and and they like i said they've been they've been in business for 22 years yeah. so they've done a lot of characters and you know uh they know what's going pretty much what's going to work it's like uh mcdonald's knows that you know the big mac <laughs> is going to be good you know it's going to be good just right. eat it you know so <laughs> It, and your and your friend will eat it because he yeah, that's yes, the place he, he likes. Yes, yes, he <laughs> Actually, you don't like Big Mac, surprisingly enough. It's really, really, really. <laughs> that's good. He's just, just, a, just a different guy. He's probably hey, a Dave, quarter pounder how, guy. <laughs> Dave, how often does a set list change? Does it change very often? Well, the great thing about the band is they're very um, they're very up to date on their set list. So let's say that we come to Evansville again, and I know that we're coming to Evansville again here very soon. Um, probably in the fall is when we're coming to Evansville, but that set list has been saved on a computer. So they'll look at the set list and go, okay, we, we need to add this character this time. We need to do this one this time. Let's change the show up. You do it like this. This is how we're going to do it. And we are constantly checking that set list to make sure that we change the show up for the people. That would be awesome. Nice. And, and Dave, like I said, whenever we get off and everything, we'll get your information and everything. But when you guys are going to be in Evansville, let us know in advance. Because I do want to get tickets for that show. And I want to oh, see, I wanna see, I I wanna, you, I wanna see you guys do, you know, I want to see you guys play. Because the people that I have that I know that have seen you guys in Evansville have talked nothing but good things about you guys. And said it was well, just very, a fantastic very, very show. Very humbled by so, that. Fantastic show. Cool. But, um all right, Alan, Bill, you got anything else? 
I don't think so. I think we covered Throw it. Adam, all. he's pretty good a, at this. He's pretty. He's, he he's knows. done this before. <laughs> he <knows. laughs> Well, he's, he's got, got, the, here, though. He's, he's got the name got tag. Questions. He's got the name tag, and he's got the shirt. He, he like I said, he's already ready for this. He shirt. is you're, skilled. You're my, you're my fourth interview today. Are wow. you skinny? Well, wow. yeah, I do a lot where, of interviews. We, where, where were your your funnest though? That's what we want to know. Yes, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> he said yeah, that three times. He said that three other times already. He did. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's very well rehearsed. Dave pimp the online presence yes, of Hairball. Please. Please. Uh, it's hairballonline.com and it's all things hairball. There's merch on there. There's also show dates and show updates. There's videos and pictures. And um, and uh, again, you could get all things hairball online. And then, of course, our uh, social media presence is hairball on Instagram. Uh, and then it's uh, hairball on uh, Facebook. So uh, just feel free to look at any of those. Uh, social media presences or uh, the online on hairball online and and uh, just come over and, and have a good time with us we'd love to see you at a show uh, i promise you this i mean when you come to the show we're going to have something for you and you're going to have a big time because we refuse to uh, not let you have fun our intention is to burn your eyes out of your head make your eardrums bleed and leave you sticky broke and confused the way an 80s show should innocent um, we're, we're, we're there. Yeah, we're there. We're there to make you just lose your mind and uh, and have fun. We don't allow any negative energy in our shows. We don't allow anybody to come in uh, and, and, and not have a smile on their face. So we're going to push you up against the wall and you're going to have a good time, whether you like it or not. So perfect. Uh, come on out and, and, uh, <laughs> and let's have some fun. And we don't, uh, we don't uh, meet strangers. We just uh, have friends we haven't met yet. So everybody come on out and let's have a big time. I did notice on your page, you had the video of you playing, uh, you were a gene, you had a Paul and you had the, the David Lee Roth doing Charlie Daniels backstage at the thing. <laughs> and it, it's that's, great. that's the greatest thing when you're sitting there going, Oh yeah. About every oh, five yeah. seconds. <laughs> and, I tell you what, and that, and that little trill you do with the bass and the guitar, to go do, you just yeah. like got a, you got hammered it. I'm like, going, that's fucking awesome. You, you know, you know, what's funny about that is that I, I brought them that idea. I said, listen, I know this is going to sound stupid, but if we do this right, it's going to be great. It's funny. Or it's going to be horrible. It's going to be one of the two, but either way, I'm, I'm willing to land wherever you all are. If y'all willing to do it, I told them about it and they just started laughing their ass off. They go, yes, that's it. So I taught him, I taught the Paul Stanley guy the song. And uh, the David Lee Roth, he, he gets up there and the way he's standing, he's standing on a workout bench. Right. Backstage. And we look like mini kiss because we're below him. <laughs> and it just all came together. It is. So and you got that. And you got that. You got that stance. You're, you're doing you're like the, the demon thing. And oh, yeah. then the, the Paul guy is doing kind of the leg kind of underneath the thing and the, the acoustic the and shit. Yeah, Dude, it, it's so that's funny. the funniest shit ever if you <laughs> go to so days funny. go to day go to days uh your website or your uh, facebook page has it actually yeah. if you look it up so it's fucking it funny. is it's pretty pretty daggone fine i will it i uh pat myself on the back oh, I, on that, i'll pat you on back for that one that's it's funny pretty one. stupid <laughs> huh? pretty epically stupid so if you want to laugh go ahead and go see that that just goes to show exactly that we don't take ourselves so seriously and uh you know we're we're just knuckleheads and fans like you and uh we just wear more makeup than you do so and spandex and, and we look like muppets so there you go it's it's uh it's a lot of fun cool awesome. all right they hang tight as i take us out of here Y'all visit us on agesofrock.com. Check out our past episodes and social media links. And until next time, peace out. Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks.